Thank you very much for this opportunity to summarize the current status of prognostic factors and the risk grouping and future direction of neuroblastoma pathology. I have nothing to disclose. Okay, this is the prognostic factors we are and will be using for the COG neuroblastoma risk classification. As for the clinical staging, we will use the uh, INRG staging system and we will be using the uh, three age cutoff, 365 days, 548 days, and five years in a, a revised risk classification. <coughs> Histopathology, Mikan status, uh, proidy, uh, they are the uh, same factors historically you have been using. And as for the segmental chromosomal aberrations, we will use 1P deletion, 11Q deletion, and also thinking about including 17Q gain. Sorry, but uh, this is a very busy slide. The COG neuroblastoma revised risk classification starts with clinical stage and includes all the other uh, prognostic factors to distinguish low, intermediate, and high risk groups. And this is uh, already published in the Journal of the uh, Clinical Oncology in July of this year. So please uh, check the publication in detail. Uh, this slide gives you event-free survival and overall survival uh, of the patient in the low, intermediate, and high-risk group. As you see here, very good survival rates are expected by surgery alone for the patient in the low-risk group and surgery or biopsy and non-aggressive chemotherapy for the patient in the intermediate uh, risk group. However, a prognosis of the patient in the high risk group is still not great, despite the uh, multimodal uh, intensive treatment. Okay, uh, by the way, uh, this slide shows hazard ratio of the individual prognostic factors and clinical staging distinguishing uh, stage M, that means metastatic disease, and then uh, stage L1, L2, localized diseases, and uh, stage MS uh, gives us very high hazard ratio like this. And also you see here the uh, pathology classification by INPC distinguishing favorable histology group and unfavorable histology group gives us very high hazard ratio. So we pathologists realize that we need to do more. In other words, we think that uh, just classifying favorable histology and unfavorable histology tumors in this disease is not enough. At the same time, we clearly realize that uh, unfavorable histology neuroblastomas are not uniform, but they are heterogeneously composed of uh, molecularly and biologically different tumors. Uh, so that uh, we should go uh, more deep in the unfavorable histology tumors and look for the uh, actionable or druggable targets. First, we spend more time in MIC and oncogene amplified tumors. We realize that uh, around 90% of MIC and amplified neuroblastomas overexpress uh, NMIC protein. And the protein expression, rather than the uh, DNA amplification, can more directly be associated with aggressive clinical behavior. And also, we found uh, that the Mikan amplified tumor shows the uh, nuclear hypertrophy uh, as a sign of protein overexpression, like this. So, and MIC uh, protein bind uh, max protein, and MIC max heterodimer uh, can activate uh, the uh, downstream targets and present historically the uh, characteristic appearance of the uh, either undifferentiated or poorly differentiated neuroblastoma with high MKI, like this, and then uh, it's unfavorable histology and poor prognosis. So we check more unfavorable histology neuroblastomas. And the first, uh, MIC and amplified neuroblastoma with nuclear hypertrophy express NMIC protein detected by immunochemistry. 
However, among the enemy not amplified neuroblastomas, uh, there are some tumors demonstrating the uh, nuclear hypertrophy and then others do not show nuclear hypertrophy. Uh, since uh, these tumors uh, with or without uh, nuclear hypertrophy do not uh, have mechan oncogene amplification, uh, they do not express enemy protein. However, since the uh, this group of tumor uh, with the uh, nuclear hypertrophy, uh, we started look for the uh, other protein expression uh, other than the uh, enemy protein. And to make a long story short, we found the protein uh, that is semic protein. Okay, and then uh, then we screened a total of 355 neuroblastomas of the uh, undifferentiated and poorly differentiated subtype in this chemically, and found that 19% of the tumors expressed endemic protein, and 10% of the tumors expressed semic protein. Uh, this shows a uh, survival curve based on the uh, uh, protein expression and favorable histology without the uh, uh, expressing uh, enemic and semic protein shows a very uh, good prognosis. And prognosis of the unfavorable histology uh, without protein expression came down like this. And uh, most important things uh, here was the prognosis of the uh, either semic protein of expressing uh, of expression or enemy uh, protein of expression. Those tumors uh, prognosis is very very bad. So we named these tumors as MIC driven neuroblastoma. Okay, so. MIC-driven neuroblastoma is defined by augmented expression of either enemic protein or semic protein, uh, like this. And they are characterized by the nuclear hypertrophy, and they are highly aggressive. And tumor uh, expressing the uh, enemic protein uh, significantly associated with enemic gene amplification, i.e. Uh, around 90% of the uh, MCN amplified tumor shows endemic protein expression. In contrast, okay, uh, the, uh, it is very rare to see the uh, uh, MIC, CMIC oncogene amplification in the uh, tumor expressing the uh, CMIC protein. Uh, there seems to be uh, other mechanisms than the uh, genomic amplification for semic protein expression in neuroblastoma. Okay, uh, next item is telomere abnormalities in neuroblastoma. Telomere abnormalities prevent uh, neuroblastic cells from replication, senescence, and cellular death. And there are two mechanisms, the mechanisms reported for the telomere abnormalities. They are the uh, increased uh, tarot activities, secondary to the uh, gene rearrangement, and ALT phenotype, alternative lengthening of telomeres. Uh, this ALT phenotype is due to the uh, ATRX gene mutation and rare DAX gene mutation. Uh, this scheme summarizes the uh, telomere abnormalities in neuroblastoma. Telomerase activation can be seen in both mic driven neuroblastoma and non mic driven neuroblastoma. Uh, the TART uh, can be one of the targets of uh, mic family protein. That's why the uh, uh, telomerase activation can be seen in the uh, mic driven neuroblastoma. And also, TART gene rearrangement uh, can cause telomerase activation, while uh, ALT phenotype seems to be totally independent from them, uh, and that is uh, not usually seen in the uh, mic driven neuroblastoma and uh, neuroblastoma with TART rearrangement. Now, uh, we have three subgroups in the uh, unfavorable histology neuroblastomas. They are defined by actionable or uh, druggable targets, hopefully. Uh, sorry, but I'm a pathologist. I'm not oncologist, so that uh, I'm telling you my hope, okay? 
I know it's very tough and difficult to make them as targets in real life. However, uh, there have already been challenges against these targets using inhibitors, blockers, destabilizers, etc., etc. And since the ALT phenotype caused by the structural gene alterations of ATRX gene, uh, it would be uh, very difficult to regain the protein loss. However, uh, the uh, ATR uh, is known as the main player of the uh, ALT phenotype, uh, so that the uh, ATR inhibitor could be effective in this case. So these are what we call is precision pathway targeting medicine approach. Okay, this is a summary of my talk. Now we have four subgroups in the unfavorable histology in neurostomas. Uh, they are MIG subgroup, TARD subgroup, ALT subgroup, and NAR uh, subgroup. As I mentioned, uh, we know the targets of these subgroups, i.e. Uh, MIG, TARD, and ALT. Well, uh, we are hoping that uh, most of the tumors in the NAR subgroup could respond nicely to the uh, currently available uh, high-risk protocol. Okay, so thank you very much uh, for listening to my talk. And uh, if you have any question or a suggestion, please send me the uh, email. I try my best to answer it. Thank you very much.